got our Camp Critter collection down there, Winchester, model 92, made in A little thunder, kind of apropos just in time for a little thunder on the mountain with the original Winchester model 1892. And uh, again, this is an original. Uh, this was made, serial number wise, in 1892. So this is one of the first ones that came out from Winchester. Happens to be in caliber of 3220. We're on the marking 32. Winchester center fire. So uh, I got this uh, fairly, fairly long time ago when, when eBay still had firearms on their site and got it through an auction. Uh, was was certainly super happy to get uh, something this old in the first model year that it came out. Uh, the the 3220 cartridge or 32 uh, Winchester center fire. This is a small game cartridge. It's it's certainly not a deer cartridge. It's for rabbits and foxes and things like that. Uh, we'll take a look through. We'll take a look at some of the cartridges. Why don't you come on over and take a look at this rifle. I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, of course, who, uh, who created this model? John Browning, of course. Uh, Winchester asked them to, to John to uh, create a pistol caliber rifle that was a little bit stronger than uh, some of the previous models, the uh, 1873 and a couple of the others. So he said, I'm going to come out uh, with a new design within a month, or you can have the design for free. Two weeks later, he had the working prototype for this. And of course, that's our, there are John Browning, the, or the father of firearms in the, in the country, that's for certainly sure. Uh, let's take a look on this right here as you can see look at that model 1892 Winchester uh, love how that looks of course this is uh, how many years old now uh, 100 getting on to be 121 I guess 121 years old still looks good uh, bluing is about gone we're in in the patina look of it at this point but uh, as we can see the 32 WCF or Winchester Center Fire up there, and uh, it's in pretty good shape. It has some dings, but uh, for a, for a rifle that was used, and and as we can remember, a lot of firearms back then they were used as tools. They weren't just something that you'd fire out at the range. You come home, you put it in your closet, and you never touch it again. Uh, they were used and used often, and and this one's one. It has some dings on it, but. I think it's actually in pretty good shape for actually being the original model year. Uh, one nice thing, or about one amazing thing about this rifle too, over a million of these were produced. And uh, that's, that's really saying something, I think, for a, for a rifle, uh, that, that over a million of these were produced by Winchester. Of course, out of production now, uh, you can get some clones or some copies. Uh, Rossi has some, and there's, there's various uh, ones. He, I've seen a video of mine of the uh, basically the same thing except a little bit modernized. But uh, great looking rifle. Uh, let's take a look at the cartridge for a couple minutes. And we have four of them lined up over here. First, our, our 3220, and then a 3840, and then going to the 4440. And these were all produced uh, for this rifle, pistol caliber. What we do see here on the end is the big 45 Long Colt, which was not, which is kind of interesting to me. That the 45 Colt was not produced for this particular rifle. Uh, we also had the 2520 and a 218B, but uh, no 45 Colt. And as you can see, 
what I meant by small game cartridge. You can see not uh, diameter, of course, 32, not very big compared to the 38, which is really 41 caliber. Uh, it's it's a 38, uh, 38, 40, but the caliber wise really is 41. And then of course our 4440, which is uh, pretty massive. Here lies Lester Moore, shot with a 44, no less, no more. And then of course our our big 45 Colt, which is an iconic cartridge all on its own. Uh, but I just wanted to bring this out today um, and do a little bit of plinking with it, do some shooting. I had to had to put my cowboy hat on, had to put a handkerchief on, and uh, put a sidearm on just to, just to feel the peace for this, just because we're going back into 1892, and uh, just kind of wanted to get to get the spirit of it. So uh, let's load up some more cartridges. We have our usual setup. Uh, we have some two liters and have some uh, clay pigeons down there to see if I can hit. So uh, let's go ahead and start loading 10 in here. And as you can see, the nice patina look on it. Don't mind that it's not case colored or blue anymore. The patina for me is fine. So there's 10. We have our Winchester. Not very loud, to tell you the truth. I could probably take the muffs out and it wouldn't be uh, too bad, but uh, you might as well be safe and have those in. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll go across the bottom and then maybe see if we can get those, uh, those clay pigeons up at the top. Here. All right. Well, if there's a two liter down there, I think we'll have to go ahead and get it. And uh, some of the big plates. So as we can see, no failures on that. You have to remember to make sure I do a nice long stroke on that when I'm going through. Now we'll take a look at the, uh, the locking design on this that makes it so strong. As we can see, our locking bolts, or our locking lugs go right through the bolt when it comes up to really lock that, uh, that cartridge in there. We don't have to worry about that bolt flying back at us. And we're, of course, empty. So the only thing I can think of do is uh, load a few more up and take some more shots with this uh, this wonderful rifle. The, the, of course, the recoil is next to nothing. I uh, can't remember the exact weight. If I think if I remember, it's about seven and a half pounds or so. Nice octagonal barrel, uh, but uh, it shoots like a dream. Of course, we have the Crescent Moon buttstock on it. And as we can see, the, the wood has shrunk over time, but that's okay. There's a, a few dings in here, but to uh, tell you the truth, I think this is really in good shape for, for being an actual made in 1892. I think I got it from somebody in Texas. You know, does that mean, oh boy, it was Texas and Cowboys used it? I don't know. Not sure. That doesn't matter. But uh, let's go ahead and put some more in and uh, use it. One thing about this is I'm loading up. Uh, of course, this was made. This is the model, Winchester 1892. Even has our patent date on there of uh, patent October 14th. If I can read that right, 1884. So some parts were uh, were patented earlier than certainly 1892. But uh, if you're if you like cowboy movies like I do, and uh, I usually catch at least one or two cowboy movies a week. 
you will see this gun used over and over and over as uh, the, the rifle in cowboy pictures. There's a lot of B1873s out there, but for the most part, uh, John Wayne, he used the heck out of this, and his movies were really supposed to be in the, in the 1880s, late 1870s. But he had the Winchester 92, the big loop lever that John Wayne would have had. That's a model 1892, El Dorado, uh, the War Wagon, if uh, those of you are familiar with that movie. Uh, Kirk Douglas opens the safe in the War Wagon when they capture it, and you'll see him prop the door open with the Winchester 1892, which I always somewhat cringe just because I could think of the heavy weight bearing down on the barrel and just like, oh God, but uh, of course that's movie magic and they certainly, they certainly made enough of these to, uh, to use as props. So I guess I haven't been loading up while I was talking, but uh, and again, if you're a big Western person like I am, you will see the 1892s in so many, so many pictures. And just because they were so prevalent that over a million made, how could you not use that uh, when, a, when a movie theater needed hundreds of rifles? There's a little th more thunder on the mountain for us. As the movie theaters needed hundreds of rifles, well, they certainly weren't going to get the 1873s and the, uh, all the other ones that they needed, so okay. you're using this, this nice 1892. Plates down here. I don't think I missed that one. There we go. Let's get that keg. How about our two liter? Oh, he went down. The thud. I want more plates. And I think that is it. We are empty. So, certainly fun. Uh, if you ever have the opportunity to pick up one of these, if you're a little bit of the Western person like I am, again, I live in the East Coast. I'm a, I don't consider myself a cowboy, never did consider myself a cowboy. But it doesn't mean that you can't enjoy cowboy arms, cowboy action, uh, the spirit of it uh, for what it was. And uh, just enjoy yourself. Try to pick yourself up one of these. Again, great, great rifle to have. Uh, glad I got it. Uh, I'll bring it home, clean it up, and uh, put it in the place of prevalence in the house. Certainly uh, certainly one of my prized firearms, just for being as old as it is. Still working condition. I think I took uh, 25 shots there. I might have missed once, uh, which was probably me. I don't think it was the rifle, from what I can tell. So, uh, certainly uh, certainly a, a great piece. And you know, like I said before, uh, when you're watching some of those movies, look for the rifle. You'll, you'll see it in, in many, many, many movies. Uh, that the time frame was supposed to be pre-1892. So this is uh, White Rook 85, signing out. Camp go time, a little thunder in the background, thunder on the range, and until uh, next time.